Thanks a lot, Kent. Uh, senior night, uh, 2023 tomorrow. Want to invite everybody out uh, as we get to final opportunity to honor our seniors. Uh, start with Parker Edwards. Have really enjoyed uh, getting to coach him this season. Came over from southeastern Louisiana a couple years ago. Already has his uh, degree in marketing at LSU and will, will complete his master's here in the spring. Uh, and just a high character young man all about the team. Uh, will go on to have great success in, in whatever avenue he so chooses. Uh, and then K.J. Williams uh, will be his last game here at LSU uh, in the PMAC. Uh, been an absolute privilege getting to coach him over the last five seasons. Uh, you know, just became the 123rd player in the history of college basketball to go over 2,000 points and 1,000 rebounds. Uh, I know he's, he's most proud of uh, crossing the century mark with over 100 wins and his, his two NCAA tournament wins uh, in those appearances. So I uh, look forward to celebrating with him and his family tomorrow night as well. Yeah, I mean, you touched on a little bit there, but you've obviously had KJ around for quite a while now. Just what, what do you think he's meant to this first year with the program? Well, I think selfishly for me, it's just it's been a lot of fun to get to coach him and watch his growth and development over the years. I uh, had a really good freshman year. He's one for five from three-point range on the season, and now you see some of the games uh, and the efficiency with which he shot from behind the three-point arc and just the continued growth and development of his game. Uh, he's a guy who's very unselfish. Uh, he's all about trying to impact winning. And you know, while I know he would have liked to have done more winning this season, uh, I think he's really been able to create value for himself uh, as he moves forward with his professional career uh, starting this spring. Where did you see him? Uh, I mean, here is a, a, you know, you had him for four years and then he, you have him here. Where did you see him maybe develop maybe a little more this year? In what area did he do that? And did you see him kind of maybe uh, mentoring the, the two bigs? You got the young kids, Jalen and, um, and Sean. Did you see him try to help them a little? Yeah, I think his growth and development this season specifically, just the continued versatility to his game. I think you've seen him be able to score in the post and and garner double team coverage in inside. He's I think improved his passing out of the post in those situations as well. Uh, you've seen him be able to put the ball on the floor and get to the basket and finish plays, and then just the consistency with which he shot the ball from behind the three point arc uh, at six ten, two hundred fifty pounds has been really impressive, and uh, I, I think. Uh, for the younger guys, he's, he's provided a model of, you know, the, the process, you know, that it doesn't happen overnight. I think he averaged around six points a game as a freshman uh, and goes on to, to cross the 2,000-point mark, over 1,000 rebounds. Uh, the, the development of his game on the perimeter, uh, I think he has set a good example there. He just told us that you recruited him when he was 16. Um, did you see him blossoming into this type of player? And then also with transfer portal and everything and guys moving so much, how special is it to have a guy for that long underneath you in this game? Yeah, probably going to be pretty rare uh, in college basketball moving forward. You know, we had the opportunity to, to recruit him for two, two years uh, and then to coach him you know, with the COVID bonus year five. So, um, you know, we, we had high hopes for him when we signed him. Uh, loved his versatility and – uh, ability at at six foot nine, he, he really he grew another inch when he got uh, to Murray State. Continued to get stronger. Uh, you know, got to go to the you know, had, had 16 points in, in an NCAA tournament win as a, as a true freshman. And I thought just got better every year. Uh, if you if you study the numbers, he's shown consistent improvement uh, from buying into the process, the the hard work that that is required. only 60 picks in the NBA draft. Do you see him maybe getting a chance or he's going to have to pay his dues in the G League maybe? Or, but do you see him as a potential pro later? Yeah, great question, Sheldon. I, I haven't paid attention uh, to any of the mock drafts or any of those type things at, at this point in the season. Uh, but I think as you look at the evolution of the game and the value of three-point shooting, uh, you don't see many traditional – you know, back to the basket post players in, in today's game anymore. 
his ability to shoot the ball from the perimeter, uh, in, in addition to just all the things he can do, will will allow him to play this game uh, for a long time. Uh, I think a lot of that will depend on how the workouts go uh, this spring with the NBA teams. Uh, but I do think he's taking advantage of the opportunity to play against some of the best front court players in America uh, this year in the SEC and is uh, delivered at a high level. Yeah, just um, coming off the Ole Miss game with two games left, uh, just how are y'all continuing to uh, instill y'all's def defensive you know, identity and just culture just moving forward? Well, we took a step backward there Saturday. Uh, I think we've talked about this quite a bit. You know, when you've seen us have success this season, the offense and defense have worked together. Uh, you look at Vanderbilt last Wednesday, we only had seven turnovers. Uh, we took high quality shots. Uh, we got the ball where it needed to go. Uh, we were aggressive off the dribble, uh, getting to the free throw line. You know, we go 21 to 27 there. And what that enabled us to do on the, on the defensive end, while Vandy still scored the ball, uh, we didn't give up easy baskets off our turnovers. Uh, because we didn't take bad shots, we weren't in disadvantage transition break opportunities uh, where it's difficult to stop teams. And unfortunately, we went backwards there on Saturday uh, after getting off to the 15 to eight lead. Uh, some turnovers uh, led to easy baskets. It was actually a fairly even game on the turnovers, uh, but Ole Miss scored 16 points off our turnovers. We only scored four off of theirs. Uh, and then poor shots selection uh, put us in disadvantaged transition uh, defensive situations uh, that really hurt us. And I guess the final piece of that would be uh, really the balance of breakfield, I thought, dominated the game at the four spot off the dribble, which then in turn opened up some three-point opportunities for them. And Morrell and Abrams stepped up and knocked them down at a high level there in the second half. Uh, didn't get enough stops, bottom line, in the second half. We scored 43 points in the second half, shot over 50% from the floor. Uh, that, that should be good enough on the road, uh, but we didn't get enough stops to give ourselves a chance. Coach, with um, how – tough this season's been. Um, I'm sure you've had tough seasons at Murray State like this. How will sort of the transfer portal and recruiting, how is that sort of impacted by this? Like what is the the sell to players after tough seasons like this? Yeah, fortunately, I you know, hadn't, hadn't had losing streaks like this before, and, and it has certainly been challenging. Um, I think the, the goal is you learn a lot from it. Uh, and, and changes that need to be made as you go forward. Uh, I really, as far as the all-encompassing evaluation uh, of the season and, and how we need to approach the portal and all those things, uh, have not, not in a position to comment on all that right now. You know, the focus right now is just trying to find a way you know, to go 1-0 and, and, and win another game. Uh, but after the season, certainly we'll evaluate and have very open discussions in here as to how we'll move forward.